God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Their own strength could not save them. It was your strength and the light of your face. We heard with our own ears, O God. Our fathers have told us the story of the things you did in their days, you yourself in days long ago. To plant them, you uprooted the nations. To let them spread, you laid peoples low. No sword of their own won the land. No arm of their own brought them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. It is you, my King, my God, who granted victories to Jacob. Through you we beat down our foes. In your name we trampled our aggressors. For it was not in my bow that I trusted, nor yet was I saved by my sword. It was you who saved us from our foes. It was you who put our foes to shame. All day long our boast was in God, and we praised your name without ceasing. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Their own strength could, could not, not save, save them. them. It, it was, was your strength, strength and, and the light, light of your face. face. Turn back to the Lord. He will not hide his face. Yet now you have rejected us disgraced us. You no longer go forth with our armies. You make us retreat from the foe, and our enemies plunder us at will. You make us like sheep for the slaughter, and scatter us among the nations. You sell your own people for nothing, and make no profit by the sale. You make us the taunt of our neighbors, the laughing stock of all who are near. Among the nations, you make us a byword. Among the peoples, a thing of derision. All day long, my disgrace is before me. My face is covered with shame. At the voice of the taunter, the scoffer. At the sight of the foe and avenger. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Turn back to the Lord. He, he will, will not hide, hide his face. face. Arise, Lord, do not abandon us forever. This befell us, though we had not forgotten you, though we had not been false to your covenant, though we had not withdrawn our hearts, though our feet had not strayed from your path. Yet you have crushed us in a place of sorrows and covered us with the shadow of death. Had we forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to another God, would not God have found this out, he who knows the secrets of the heart? It is for you that we face death all day long and are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake, O Lord, why do you sleep? Arise, do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our oppression and misery? For we are brought down low to the dust, our body lies prostrate on the earth. Stand up and come to our help. Redeem us because of your love. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Arise, Lord. Do, Do not, not abandon, abandon us, us forever. forever. Let the light of your face shine on me, O Lord. Teach me your way of holiness. The beginning of the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to thank God always for you, brothers, as is fitting, because your faith flourishes evermore, and the love of every one of you for one another grows ever greater. Accordingly, we ourselves boast of you in the churches of God, regarding your endurance and faith in all your persecutions and the afflictions you endure. 
This is evidence of the just judgment of God, so that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. For it is surely just on God's part to repay with afflictions those who are afflicting you and to grant rest along with us to you who are undergoing afflictions at the revelation of the Lord Jesus from heaven with his mighty angels in blazing fire, inflicting punishment on those who do not acknowledge God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will pay the penalty of eternal ruin, separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes to be glorified among his holy ones and to be marveled at on that day among all who have believed. For our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him in accord with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will come to be glorified in his Holy One and to be adored by all who have believed in him. The Lord is faithful in all his words and loving in all his deeds and to be adored by all who have believed in him. From the Catechesis by St. Cyril of Jerusalem, Bishop. The Catholic Church glories in every deed of Christ. Her supreme glory, however, is the cross. Well aware of this, Paul says, God forbid that I glory in anything but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. At Siloam, there was a sense of wonder, and rightly so. A man born blind recovered his sight. But of what importance is this when there are so many blind people in the world? Lazarus rose from the dead, but even this affected only Lazarus. What of those countless numbers who have died because of their sins? Those five miraculous loaves fed 5,000 people, yet this is a small number compared to those all over the world who are starved by ignorance. After 18 years, a woman was freed from the bondage of Satan. But are we not all shackled by the chains of our own sins? For us all, however, the cross is the crown of victory. It has brought light to those blinded by ignorance. It has released those enslaved by sin. Indeed, it has redeemed the whole of mankind do not, then, be ashamed of the cross of Christ. Rather, glory in it. Although it is a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles, the message of the cross is our salvation. Of course it is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it was not a mere man who died for us, but the Son of God, God made man. In the Mosaic law, a sacrificial lamb banished the destroyer. But now it is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Will he not free us from our sins even more? The blood of an animal, a sheep, brought salvation. Will not the blood of the only begotten Son bring us greater salvation? He was not killed by violence. He was not forced to give up his life. His was a willing sacrifice. Listen to his own words. I have the power to lay down my life and take it up again. Yes, he willingly submitted to his own passion. He took joy in his achievement. In his crown of victory he was glad, and in the salvation of man he rejoiced. He did not blush at the cross, for by it he was to save the world. No. It was not a lowly man who suffered, but God incarnate. He entered the contest for the reward he would win by his patient endurance. 
Certainly, in times of tranquility, the cross should give you joy. But maintain the same faith in times of persecution. Otherwise, you will be a friend of Jesus in times of peace and his enemy during war. Now you receive the forgiveness of your sins and the generous gift of grace from your king. When war comes, fight courageously for him. Jesus never sinned, yet he was crucified for you. Will you refuse to be crucified for him who for your sake was nailed to the cross? You are not the one who gives the favor. You have received one first. For your sake he was crucified on Golgotha. Now you are returning his favor. You are fulfilling your debt to him. To those who are on the way to destruction, the message of the cross is foolishness. But we who are on the way to salvation see it as the proof of God's power. We preach a crucified Christ, an obstacle to the Jews, sheer madness to the Gentiles. But we who are on the way to salvation see it as the proof of God's power. Let us pray. Lord our God, help us to love you with all our hearts and to love all men as you love them. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.